It's time we've gotten back to this show's roots and spotlighted a little something on the romantic side. <laughs> Wait, that's not this show's roots at all. And if we are going back to our roots, the lighting is way too good here. And it's not even that good. Well, regardless of that, we're going to look at a nice, sweet love story for the ladies. Open your mouth. What the fuck? Well, I guess there's nothing more romantic than a couple getting together under the covers and having a shared nightmare about a movie called Windows. This is completely different than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a movie about people who like to fuck glass. That's kind of my thing. is a 1980 lesbian thriller in which Talia Shire is stalked by her psychotic lesbian neighbor and then is saved by the power of penis. It's that movie that your anti-gay uncle probably got his entire worldview of lesbianism from. I'm sure this movie comes to us from a company that we've yet to discuss, uh, United Artists. Between this and Heaven's Gate, how the hell is my show turned into what the fuck, United Artists? If this movie was swept under the radar, it's because it came out the same year as Heaven's Gate, in which Michael Cimino went so over budget that none of the other United Artists filmmakers could even afford a radar. And if this movie is called Windows, then why the hell are we opening in a tunnel? What the hell is this? Are they walking through a time machine? I knew this was a lesbian thriller, but I didn't know it opened in a brightly lit vagina. Talia Shire plays Emily, as seen on the poster, where it's claimed somebody loves Emily too much. I don't see how they could love her too much. They gave her a new knife to add to her Switchblade collection. Could this be Emily's male love interest in the movie? Now listen, Emily, I'm having difficulty with... Uh... Stephen, we're getting a divorce. Pfft, typical quick Hollywood marriage. Apparently the music is by Ennio Morricone. I can't tell because no music has happened yet. Five minutes into an Ennio Morricone scored film, I should feel like I need to shoot some bandits with a six shooter. Oh, this is why things are moving fast. The movie is closing. Windows was the only directorial effort from Gordon Willis, famed cinematographer of such movies as the Godfather trilogy and numerous Woody Allen flicks. So, it's a rather good-looking movie. It was the transcendence of its day. The only reason Talia Shire went along with this movie is that it fit the clause in her contract that all her characters must wear knit hats. Ah, New York in the early 80s, where if you lived in an apartment, the mail was a free-for-all just sitting in one big pile by the door. Shit. Also, cats were known to break into your apartment. Did I say cats? I meant the opening scene to Miss 45. Someone wants to kill Emily too much. Oh no, he's not gonna make her sing Jingle Bells, is he? You yell, the knife goes down your throat. Do you understand? Then she's definitely not going to be able to sing Jingle Bells with a knife in her throat. How could this scene get any more disgusting? You got underwear on? Huh? <sighs> yes, but she's managed to shit them, thank you very much. Paulie is taking his abuse towards his sister a little too hard in this Rocky movie. And is it too much to wipe away the drool before we continue? And some fucking help you are, cat. Guard cat my ass. To make matters worse, this is all happening on 9-11. September 11th, 1980, the date in which the Marlboro Diamond was stolen during the UK Diamond Heist. What did you think I meant? The cops are hard at work on the case. They're interviewing the cat. Wait, what am I looking at? This is framed like they actually are interviewing the cat. She does have some good books, though. Who doesn't love the book on stuttering from famed writer Billy Bibbit? 
Then in walks Andrea, played by Elizabeth Ashley. Who are you? I'm looking for Emily. I'm a little late. Did another villain show up already? She's pissed because there's always some straight dude showing up taking villain roles from hard-working lesbian characters. Should be easy to give a description. The creep looks like the poster, but he's a dude. You are. You are making her nervous. Says the woman who's gonna pull a switchblade on her later. But in times like this, it's always good to have a friend. You don't have to tell him anything, you know. He's never gonna catch who did it. See? They're never gonna catch the guy who assaulted you, so why even try? <laughs> We're the best of friends. Besides, look at that guilty face. Clearly, they keep cutting to the cat because he had something to do with this. Why else would they keep cutting to him? Boy, they just filmed this in Rocky's old apartment, didn't they? No, don't pet the cat. He's an accomplice. I cannot believe that I once voted for this cat. Naturally, Emily moves into a different apartment. And remember, no pets. Good, so the cat can stop letting in rapists. Ah, it doesn't come with any intruders. Perfect. And it's got a brilliant view of a giant picture of New York. Just look at this view. It's perfect for gazing upon the You Belong to the City music video. Meanwhile, she calls work as they're putting together the most confusing McDonald's play place I've ever seen. She's using the neighbor's phone to try to get people to help her move. Doesn't seem hard. She only has one box. At least she has nice neighbors. You know, young lady, there is a telephone. A pay telephone in the lobby. Thanks, dick. You could have told her that before you let her use the phone. So what's going to be the story with Andrea? Is she going to track down the rapist and then ask Emily out? And when Emily rejects her, she's going to stalk her? Is it going to be one of those kind of movies? What the fuck? Okay, so she just already is crazy. It's one of those, I love this person so much that I'm gonna hire someone to assault them so I can masturbate to the recording movies. Ah, uh, typical moving day in New York. You gotta remember to bring your large pizza with you. It was nice of the cat to draw her a picture to tell her he was sorry. See, he even hangs her paper plate on the wall for it to dry. That way she can eat that pizza. But I still don't trust this cat, eerily looking over the table. And he's teleported under the couch, waiting for the perfect opportunity to pull out his switchblade claws. Andrea comes over to talk to Emily a little bit about therapy. What does the shrink have to say? Marin? He says, hmm, what do you think? A lot of that. I was never very comfortable with Dr. Marin anyway, and... Yeah, Dr. Marin kept suggesting exorcism. She's not fucking possessed. You can totally feel the love in this room. Ooh, careful, don't stare too long or you'll catch the gay. There's another knock at the door, like it'll really be the rapist again. What? Okay, seriously, your cat needs to stop inviting people over. Look at the bright side. At least he knocked this time. Someone's trying to break into Emily's apartment. Too much. And if they're such good detectives, then why do they need to label the door? Emily tells Detective Bob what happened, but he's too busy trying to catch this guy with a pillow under his shirt. Perhaps these two can hit it off. Oh, no, oh, oh. That's not, not necessary. I... I... Can take a cab. I really like cabs. I've heard that sentence on taxi cab confessions. People who like cabs so much they fuck them. And the only reason she likes cabs here is because she's not in the movie The Bone Collector. Andrea helped her out a little by bringing her stuff over, so she may have paid for her to be assaulted, but she is a friend who will help you move. That's a plus. We put your stuff upstairs. My stuff? A girl. Girl in a sports car. Made two trips. Thank, thank you. She has the cat. 
A cat that cannot be trusted. I'm watching you. To say you're welcome, Andrea is wearing her best I'm on the Tonight Show tonight and will do what I can to seduce Johnny dress. Not everyone is a fan, though. Ah, damn! Jenny! So the cat does nothing when she's being raped, but heaven forbid Andrea try touching it? Emily is sneaking the cat into her new place. Uh, uh, no worries. It's not a cat in here. It's a baby. Those are allowed, right? So I figured I'd just stalk you by the front door. That's not a trigger for you, is it? Don't mind the cat in the bag, detective. I like to steal cats from children. Andrea tries approaching her again, but Emily doesn't want to be seen with her in her headlight glasses. Now she's really gonna think twice about that I like cabs line. Great day, isn't it, Larry? Lawrence. Where to? Hello. He has the same ridiculously dubbed voice as the rapist. Hopefully he doesn't say anything to give himself away. That's bullshit. You crazy? What do you know about driving a cab? Speak up. I can't hear you! Oh, shit! It wasn't the cat after all! Mm, still not convinced. She asks him to pull over so she can call to tell someone she's about to do something stupid by getting back into the cab. Maybe he's nicer this time. I think I've seen you before. I don't think, think so, Larry. Why do you keep calling me Larry? Lawrence is my name. Larry is bullshit. So he's dumb enough not to realize who she is and that he's driving her right to the police station. Quite a risk given that she already knew his name and cab number and didn't have to get back into the cab. And now we cut to rear window. At this point, I have to ask, why doesn't Andrea just ask her out? That seems like it would make this movie a lot shorter. Detective Bob is there to convince her to change her Davy Jones hair before taking the witness stand. And they're on a date, too, which must be going great. He's getting up to read the newspaper. Also, holy shit, Intruder Cat is back. And check out this deluxe big screen TV circa 1980. The cat is too busy looking at the boom mic and the film crew rather than the TV. I see they're watching one of those good, old-fashioned, straight romances. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be my reaction to the end of this movie. The night could only go up from here. Oh, the chicken was terrific. You have to go? Ooh, Crash and Burn is a movie I need to see at some point. You should keep your door locked. Haha, <laughs> it's too late. Intruder Cat is already inside. I also hope that Andrea's therapy is going well. I know what I want. You mean in a poetic sense? And I know how to get it. By hiring a rapist? And I'm not sure about this mellow music playing over all this craziness. I can't yet, but I, I will. You're certain you will? Yes! Yes. How is this helping her? Too bad I know what happens when Elizabeth actually becomes the therapist. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Such lovely music played over drinking some wine, going on a date, listening to an assault. <laughs> I think the easiest job on this movie was the set decorator. Nice blank wall there. At least now I know why the movie is called Windows, I guess. I mean, it has windows in it. And it's filmed in amazing James Bond opening vision. Anything else gonna make this awkward? I... This was the one... You son of a bitch. Don't touch her. So her talking vagina drunk dialed? Also, she just gave away that she's in a spot where she can see them. Oh, thankfully, she still has her poetry to keep herself occupied. The fire we shared went out.
trouble. The vomiting is the most romantic part. Though I don't like this movie's suggestion that all poets are spontaneous vomiters. Sorry, I can't talk over the amazing getting some ice for the neighbor scene. What the hell just happened? I feel like something important should have been shown there, rather than Emily getting ice. This is terrible. Now they're gonna have to rename the movie Curtains. Now here's the big twist. New Yorkers love burgers, which is probably why they're not going to Burger King. And did I fucking miss something while thinking about Burger King? There's a bloody fridge, a dead body. What in the hell happened? Emmy, it's Sam Marks. Kids playing in the basement found the body. Who? Oh, right, the old guy who was in one scene, and I can't remember his name. Could this lead to a clue? I want the names of anyone with a Brooklyn Heights address who bought a telescope in the last eight or nine days. Excellent! Craig Wasson is finally going down. Dr. Marin finally decides to drop Andrea as a patient for her being too crazy, but he's still comfortable enough to turn his back to her in a room of knives. What's the worst that could happen? She could leave bloody fingerprints, which the cops still wouldn't figure out, but it'll give the window washer something to do. Somehow, Emily's gonna figure out that the cat has been the mastermind all along. <laughs> Faking his own death, a likely alibi. I'd buy it more if it were a rabbit in boiling water. Now she goes to the safest place in town, the apartment of the craziest person that she knows, with an even creepier doorman. That was a terrible thing what happened to Mr. Marks, huh? Yeah. Why is he acting creepy? There are no red herrings in this. The cat is out, so that obviously makes Andrea the stalker. Andrea's apartment, by the way, is a giant Camp Crystal Lake shower. Rather quickly, Emily figures out that Andrea has been spying on her. She didn't even point that telescope at Raymond Burr's apartment just to play it safe. Though given how creepy Andrea acts here, she's probably gonna figure it out pretty quick anyway. <laughs> the woman who lives in the killer's lair from when a stranger calls back is the stalker? <laughs> Emily, I think you're a little too trusting. And is it too much to ask for someone to get killed with scissors in this? There's an easy exit. Just jump through the picture of New York over the window. Ah, maybe things will be okay in here. I don't look all the time. Just every so often. See? She doesn't always spy on her. This would be almost hot if she didn't have a recording of her being raped. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. I love you. And also, Henri is terrifying. Why don't you ever smile? Because you're gonna claw her eyes out and eat her brains? Also, she just lost Mickey to a heart attack. This is going a really long way just to ask her if she wants to be on the softball team. Now they can spy on Detective Bob fixing dinner, which is the dead cat on the table. And now we are gonna share this telescope, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, no more lesbian jokes. I've officially just shit my pants, too. It's now the next morning, and it still hasn't occurred to him to go across the street to check for her. Thank God detective cinematography is helping him out. He's been checking the addresses to see if any of her friends live across the street. Only Emily took Andrea's address with her, but here's how he figures it out. no G-Page. 
weird. Everyone knows someone with the last name G. I'll bet you there's no X or Z page either. And things aren't going any better over here. I'm not going to hurt you. That's at least the second or third time you've said that, which means that you are definitely going to hurt her. Or at least hire someone to. Him in your apartment. <laughs> I told him ex exactly what to do. Exactly. Did he hurt you? <laughs> yes. No! Because I wouldn't let him. Well, at least she's being honest. She's getting all the baggage out of the way before they go on their first date. Hmm. This isn't exactly like the poster. Where's the creepy guy sitting on his chair and judging them? We'll get into the controversy of this movie in a little bit, but for right now, one thing is definitely for sure. He's like, <sighs> Elizabeth Ashley is easily carrying this movie because she is legitimately terrifying in this. At one point, she just simply stops using real words. He's... <laughs> Natalia Shire is mainly treating this situation more like she's annoyed. Stop it. Now she's learned her lesson, which is... Don't dress in a way that lesbians will be attracted to you? What is the point of this movie? And are they gonna bang or what? This is the slowest porn I've ever seen. The cops come in to bust Andrea and to give Emily a good talking to. The last thing I said to you was to stay home. I'll be back. Once again, all of this is your fault, Emily. Stop attracting crazy people. And then, the best line out of them all. She said she loved me. She kept telling me all night that she loved me. Yeah, well, in her own way, she... she probably did. Yes, in her own way. Not in the legit straight way like I do. No, she loves you in the gay way, which also involves switchblades and cab rapists. Wait, is this the end? Okay, I was wrong. I did show some tears at the end of this movie. It really is beautiful New York cinematography. Windows was a dud at the box office, as well as a critical dud, being one of Siskel and Ebert's Dogs of the Year, and receiving five Razzie nominations, including a nomination for Gordon Willis for Worst Director. Other nominees in the category included Brian De Palma for Dress to Kill, William Friedkin for Cruising, and Stanley Kubrick for The Shining. It was quite brave of the Razzies to only nominate good movies that year. Director Willis later called his decision to direct the film a mistake, but the movie also received severe protests from gay rights activists, calling the film homophobic and using hateful stereotypes towards lesbians. And, well, I can kind of see where they're coming from on this. On the one hand, not much is really made of Andrea's sexuality in the film. It's really not brought up or even used as any kind of attack against her. She just is a crazy person who happens to be gay. And if the character were a male, nothing about this script would need to be changed. On the other hand, because she is the only gay character in the film, and nothing is made of her sexuality, and she just simply is crazy from beginning to end, with no real reason or psychosis given, it does come across as if she's just simply crazy because she's gay. And the day is saved from Detective Hetero, who rescues Emily from the prospect of gay. Now they're free to be straight together. Then again, movies with similar themes didn't receive nearly as much controversy as this, such as High Tension, aka Switchblade Romance. Wait a minute. Switchblade Romance? That's a more appropriate title for this film! Or it could just be a sleazy thriller made by people who wanted to be a little taboo. I mean, how homophobic could it be? It's a Trans-America release! Hmm. 
I may be misinterpreting that name, but whether it's just a simple thriller or right-wing radio's view of angry lesbianism, this could all be open for discussion. Unless you disagree with me, and then I will block your ass! Two rubber baby buggy bumpers.